Now, back to Access Tech Live, the latest in tech and accessibility with Stephen Scott and Mark Aflalo. And we're back on Access Tech Live. Now, we're talking a lot about AI uh, on the show. And of course, why wouldn't we? Because it's the big topic of the moment, isn't it? Well, Robin Christofferson is the head of digital inclusion at AbilityNet and joins us now to discuss this in more detail. One particular device uh, we want to uh, really hone in on here. Uh, Robin, great to have you here on Access Tech Live. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, now, look, before we dive into this, before we start grilling you on the questions here, uh, <laughs> so I hope you're prepared. Uh, mm -hmm. Mark, could you perhaps describe this Rabbit R1 sure. device to of us? Course. Let's uh, get a sense of what it looks like. Yeah, I mean, it's a it's a bright orange, I guess. I mean, I haven't seen it in person, so it could be red for all I know. But uh, it's about half the height of a modern day smartphone, about the same widths and depths of a smartphone. It has a screen on the front left kind of two thirds. And on the right side of that screen, there's a little camera that can rotate from front and back. It looks like it swivels. And there's actually a scroll wheel that's embedded. It's literally like a, like a, like a not Blackberry style, but it looks like just a, like a rolling pin in the side of it. And of course, on board the device, it has its own uh, Rabbit operating system that not only features you know, the large language models that we're used to with ChatGPT, but something called a, a large action model, which I guess is a good place to start, Robin, which is how would you define a, lar a large action model? Yeah, I think this is the thing. This is the angle on the rabbit, which got the press the most excited uh, when it first was announced at CES a couple of months ago. Um, large action model, well, we've all heard of LLMs, large language models. Well, the large action model extends that to make it much more practically useful. So we all know what we can do with ChatGPT and the likes of that, creating content, whether it's words or pictures or music or videos. And obviously we know about, you know, interacting with smart devices like connected home devices, but a large action model promises to go much, much further and take our virtual assistant to another level. So you can put it into what's called teach mode and you can, using a web portal at the moment, um, teach it about all different websites and tasks that you want it to do. And it doesn't, it's not just like recording a macro, um, old school style. This is actually using AI to understand the UIs that you're teaching it so that if things change, if things move around, um, if you want to, you know, use it to book a table, but obviously things might change like the number of people or the time that you want it, then all of it will just deal with all of those things. So that's what, you know, in this rabbit OS that is powering this is seem to be the most exciting thing that people are getting really, really um, happy about looking forward to. And is this, when you're talking about this, are we talking here about practical, like things like booking a flight or like you say, booking a table, a restaurant, these are things which at the moment require a lot of clicks, a lot of typing, a lot of swipes, gestures. And of course, if you're disabled or you're blind like us, you and I, uh, you know, it's, it's a case of, you know, you have a lot of, uh, let's just say, difficulties to navigate through various websites and apps to get to what we want to get to. You're saying that we can essentially jump over all that and actually get straight to what we want to do rather than having to deal with all the challenges and the inaccessibility. Yeah, I mean, I think that in a nutshell is what it's all about. And that's the particular um, excitement for the disabled community is that you know, whilst other people might find apps a bit confusing or websites a bit complicated and, you know, cluttered, we can really, you know, have a, you know, stumble over um, unintuitive UIs, inaccessible UIs or websites. So this promises to do all the heavy lifting for you and you just ask it for it. And obviously, you know, if a service like, I don't know, um, Apple Music or Airbnb has what's called an API, which is like an official way of communicating with a third party app or device so that it can interact and, and kind of do transactions for you. This doesn't need that. This gets away uh, with any you know need for that sort of thing because it will learn about how to use apps and websites and do it for you. So, yeah. This is kind of bridging the gap between um, often, you know, really complicated uh, multi-step uh, processes on in the digital world and sort of the usability that we as disabled people would really benefit from, particularly as a lot of 
people, you know, with a vision impairment, for example, um, or a hearing impairment are, you know, older people as well, motor difficulties. So, you know, to be able to replace all of that complicated interaction and learning how a new app, a new website, you can just ask the rabbit to do it for you. So it's really about taking those intuitive natural language prompts and putting action to them, right? Instead of just, you know, give me an answer to something, now actually do something, which which I get. But I'm curious from your perspective, you know, why can't this just be in our smartphone? Why does this have to be a dedicated device? Do we need a dedicated device? Like, do I have to carry something else now? This is either a complete waste of time and money or it's brilliant <laughs> marketing. And I think the press have fallen on the side of brilliant marketing because yes, this could just be an app in your smartphone. But I think it's saying loud and clear and the bright orange design and cute kind of, you know, format sort of plays into this. This is a much simpler device. It's almost retro with that kind of um, click wheel um, to say we, you know, this is going to be simple. This, you don't need to take your phone out of your pocket. You can just use this one, press the button to talk, um, ask it a question, ask, give it a, an instruction, um, point it in your fridge and say, you know, what can I make with all of this stuff? Or what's missing in my fridge that I need to reorder from the last time I, I showed you what the contents of my fridge was. So, yeah, I mean, it's like its own entity and it's a much simpler, maybe having a longer battery life than, than an iPhone or than a smartphone, I don't know. But um, the price point, $199 has a lot of people yeah. excited as well. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I mean, we were talking earlier about Humane AI Pin, and of course that's come out. It does have a few accessibility challenges for sure for the disability community. And Mark and I were just discussing this, you know, the idea that in 2024 we're still having this fight uh, to, to get these new products, even in these new categories, to be more accessible. Does the, any of that concern you with the Rabbit device? Yes, in as much as, you know, it has got a screen. <laughs> so maybe if you have information, it will just present it on the screen and you can scroll down with the wheel to read the whole article or information, whatever it might be. I'm hoping that it will have a speech, you know, a full speech alternative option. And maybe because it's like basically a virtual assistant in a little orange box, you can say from now on, don't put anything on the screen without speaking it out fully as well. And maybe it'll learn from that. I don't know. The pre-orders of the Rabbit R1 have completely sold out. People haven't got it in their hands to play with yet. But when they do, I think, you know, there'll be a lot of demos going up online and maybe some of these questions will be answered. Yeah, hopefully they don't get the same reaction the Humane Pin has gotten, which is not good, Robin, which is not good. Listen, I look forward yeah, to your take. I think I... On the, yeah. Yeah, no, no projector on this one, but I just, I can't, you know, I just, I, I haven't quite gotten it yet. It hasn't quite clicked in my head why I need something else in my pocket. You know, my phone, you know, we went from small phones to big phones. This sounds like almost like the Reader's Digest edition of a smartphone, you know? Let's dumb it down <laughs> to the point of dumb so that we can just do everything without needing to even touch it. I, I don't know. I don't get it entirely. I think with AI, we promised to go full circle back to almost like the DOS prompt where, <laughs> you know, we started off with just a command line. Um, obviously, we can now speak that those commands and they're much more flexible but yeah and then we went to the kind of gooey and really complex desktop environments and we've kind of come back now to just being able to talk to the air or to a device and have real you know power and heft behind it so yeah whether you need a device like this to do that or whether those smarts could be built into other things like that you've already got like your smart speaker at home or your phone um yeah there's theories out on that one but I, I feel like retro is in now and this certainly kind of fits the bill in that department robin thank you for taking the time to join us before we let you go what's that one thing uh, one piece of tech that you couldn't live without on a deserted island um i'm going to be controversial and say my um t uh, bose frames <laughs> okay not bad that's a good yeah. one that's one we haven't done yeah. yet that's pretty I mean, good obviously that requires my iphone and and stuff like that but yeah i absolutely love wearing my um Bluetooth enabled sunglasses. I'm hoping they'll have a camera in them one day. Um, watch the space of the Ray Neo. That's all one word. Um, that promises to have a camera that's opened up to third party apps. So that'll be my next purchase, definitely. But yeah, they look really funky. They're much, much more durable than the old um, Bose frames. Um, uh, there are other Bluetooth 
sunglasses available. Thank you, Robin Christofferson, of course, the Director of Inclusion and AbilityNet. Uh, when we take a quick break, come back with your answers to that question. What is that one piece of tech you couldn't live without on a deserted island? Stick around. There's more Access Tech Live to come. Get involved and have your say at Access Tech Live on social media. We'll be right back. <laughs> 